The good vibes are over for the Charlotte Hornets. We have more news on Miles Bridges, and we also have some news on Kai Jones. None of it great. We'll talk about it today on Locked On Hornets. You are Locked On Hornets, your daily Charlotte Hornets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In a minute, cuz, we live. We live. We live. <laughs> It's Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We are free and available anywhere you get your podcast, And that includes YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more right now. New customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. If you're watching us on YouTube, there's Doug Branson. You can go check him out on the Substack as well at everyhornetsboxscore.com. You can listen to me, Walker Mail, every weekday on WFNZ from 12 to 3 p.m. Wes and Walker also check us out on WFNZ.com. All right, let's get straight to it because no good news is going to be talked about today, Doug, after we were feeling good after a loss in the preseason game number one. That was the highlight of the week. We got more news on Miles Bridges, and to a lesser extent, although possibly not surrounding the individual himself, we also got some news on Kai Jones. Let's get to the Miles Bridges report first, and I want to be as clear as possible. There are zero points for trying to do this on my own and making things up and not being clear as it's reported. So I'm going to read you verbatim. As we joke about it in other times, now it's serious. So we're going to read about Baxter Holmes' report on Miles Bridges, And the first report that came out from WSOC, Glenn Counts, uh, an investigative reporter here in Charlotte who had it first. I'll read you that one as well. Me and Doug both believe that Baxter Holmes is the most clear. Baxter of ESPN said this, quote, a criminal summons was issued Wednesday for Charlotte Hornets forward Miles Bridges for violating a domestic violence protective order, misdemeanor child abuse and injury to personal property, according to a spokesperson for the Mecklenburg County Sheriff's Office in North Carolina. There are all, there's also an unserved arrest warrant for the 25-year-old Bridges, which was first issued on January 2nd for violating the, uh, the domestic violence protective order, the spokesperson said to Baxter Holmes. Neither the warrant nor the summons was immediately available because as of Wednesday night, they had not yet been served. Quote, we are aware of the reports and are in the process of gathering more information. As you could have guessed, that was the Hornets' statement. Now, Glenn Counts, WSOC, did have this first. I'll read theirs as well. Criminal summons as was issued for Bridges. The criminal summons came out Wednesday. Once again, because it was not served, it's not public record. So you do not have the able or the ability to get the copy of it. The corresponding police report indicated that the victim's windshield was smashed in and that her protective order was violated by Bridges appearance. The incident happened at her residence in reference to the mother of Miles Bridges children. The victim in question is Bridges longtime girlfriend. The pair has several children and they are in the middle of a second cust in the the middle, excuse me, of a custody battle. And yes, the victim at question here is the same victim that Miles Bridges pled no contest to in a domestic felony, uh, domestic violence felony charge. And that's what he pled no contest to back in November. There's all the information, not as, as clear as we could get. There's all the information with all of that, Doug, I'll give you the floor first and just share your thoughts on what is another bad story coming out about Miles Bridges. Yeah, I think it's important to know, too, that this is an evolving story. And so details will change. Uh, the discussion that we have today will be based on all of the information that we have now. And, and as it changes, um, we will, I think, you know, comment on that as well. I'm going to start here, which is my just gut feelings when all of this news came out. And I'm going to say something that I don't like to hear when I listen to a television show, a talk show, a radio show, or another podcast. I don't like hearing this, but I'm going to say it because this is how I feel. It's our job to talk about things. That's what, um, that's what you come to this podcast for, to analyze things, sometimes to predict things, to talk about things that are happening around the Charlotte Hornets. But I am tired of talking about this guy. I am, talk- I am tired of talking about this situation. It seems to keep coming up on the show over and over and over again. I'm tired of this person being associated with the Charlotte Hornets. I'm tired of the franchise associating itself with this person. 
I am tired. And that's my first thought. And I don't know what you think about that, Walker. Oh, no. it. Uh, yeah. Of, of course. I think it's only natural <laughs> to be tired of talking about this. I, I Because the problem with this is that it's such a serious issue that we have to continue to discuss. A lot of it is based off of information that we're only getting from you know, or that we're not getting at the time that we need to talk about it which is right now this is an all this is an ongoing process again and so when you're talking about miles bridges turning himself in to be arrested for a felony domestic violence charge in the summer of 2022 we are about to hit 2024 and we're still talking about miles bridges being involved and this is because of not only his doing the first time but reportedly being involved in this again we're talking about real possible jail time because of violating his probation <laughs> so now it was serious at first it was very serious at first we're talking about possible as we know it yeah. possible jail time now because he's in violation of the protective order so yeah and and don't don't take what i just said there in terms of me being exhausted as saying it's not important because I think it's absolutely important. Both didn't take that at all. Didn't take yeah, that way. No, I no, I understand. I just want to make that clear. That I'm I'm tired of talking about it, but it doesn't mean that this isn't worthy of being talked about. That this isn't important on both. I think a human being level, and also uh, from the perspective of someone who analyzes uh, the present and future of the Charlotte Hornets as a franchise. You know, at the time of the no contest plea, Walker, we discussed how stringent his probation terms were and that he, he pled no contest, which means he did not plead guilty, which, you know, I think in essence saved his career as a basketball player. Cause had he pled guilty, I think his career as a basketball player would have been over, but well, the probation you're in direct violation of some pretty strict wording on the collective bargaining agreement. If you plead guilty. Right. And so the, the probation terms, though, were strong. 10-year protective order, uh, 100 yards away from having and no contact with the woman in the case. Also required to complete 52 weeks of domestic violence counseling, 52 weeks of parenting classes, serve 100 hours of community service, and undergo weekly narcotics testing while not being able to own any guns, ammunition, or weapon. And we also discussed at the time, Walker, that if the Hornets decided to bring Miles Bridges back, which they did, they would be bringing those terms back with them, back with him. And if he violated those terms, which were stringent, then the Hornets would have to deal with the ramifications of that. And now here we are. Well, and now there are a couple of questions here about whether the Charlotte Hornets knew about this, whether the NBA knew about this as they had a long investigation after Miles Bridges pled no contest. I believe that concluded in April, if I'm not mistaken, but the investigation was long even after Miles pled no contest. So did the Hornets know about it? Did the NBA know about it? And if they didn't, does that change the way they operate here? The one thing I want to say is mm -hmm. with Miles Bridges, there were so many people in YouTube comments. I'm going to have to deal with it at WFNZ. Already dealt with it. I'm, I was getting tagged because we talk about the Hornets. So we're going to get tagged. That comes with the job. Honestly, appreciate it with a lot of other storylines and understand it with this one. But here we are getting mentioned, added, tagged whatever and then all that does is you know pull the curtain for me to see everybody give miles bridges the benefit of the doubt and it's unfortunate to see so now what, what i get to see too is that he deserves a second chance and now here he is in pretty clear violation of what you would consider a second chance now everyone is doubting the report people are quite you can't question everything you see okay it's an actual report now picked up by multiple outlets and it's public record that the arrest is out, that the warrant is out there. It was released mm -hmm. yesterday. It's public record. You can go check it for yourself. Okay. This is as far as the facts are being reported as it is, then this is, this is all true that the report is out there. So yeah. the thing about second chances is how seriously you take them. Miles Bridges couldn't take it seriously enough to reportedly not smash a windshield at the residence belonging to the mother of his children. So if if you don't take your second chance seriously enough after pleading no contest, having this incident occur in January, and for lack of clarity, it looks like there's something else that happened as to why this came out Wednesday night for another summons, how seriously is he going to take a third? If you go back on what he has done so far, 
then it doesn't seem like he will take it that seriously, despite him going up to the podium and telling you that he would, that he'd be involved in the community. And do you want him involved in the community right now? Do you want him to be a spokesperson, a spokesperson for anybody that might be going through a domestic violence situation and needs comfort? Because I don't think it is. I don't think that's the guy that you want speaking for you. At, at this point, let's not hand him the mic. Don't hand him the hot mic in Hornets practice and have him mic'd up. No more marketing of Miles Bridges right now because it makes everybody look foolish, including the Charlotte Hornets, which I know you strongly agree with. Uh, yeah, and I, I think it's interesting to look at the timeline of this to find out uh, who knew what when. I think that could be the next level of this discussion because you know I think it's clear uh, Miles Bridges – his uh, judgment and character that were already strongly in question are even uh, more strongly in question at this point. But I think to stop there, to stop the conversation there and say, well, this, this is all Miles Bridges' fault. And if, if we just make Miles Bridges go away, then, then everything is, it can, can go back to normal. I don't think that that's, that's where the conversation should stop. I think we have to talk about the franchise's implications in this and what they knew when. All right, let's talk about it a little bit more. Coming up next on the Locked on Hornets podcast. We have more by Miles Bridges conversation, and then we'll get to the news surrounding Kai Jones as well. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use as well. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, even more than that visit fanduel.com slash locked on and kick off the nfl season fanduel the official partner of the nfl more locked on hornets coming doug you talked about it at the end of the last segment that the charlotte hornets if they do indeed wave miles bridges or rid themselves of miles bridges the conversation doesn't stop there and the hornets have to continue to answer some questions no because right now the hornets look foolish they look embarrassing uh, that they that they didn't know about this arrest warrant that has been out uh, outstanding since January. I mean, you could if, if there was uh, this court summons, if that's a separate event that happened, you, you know, that was issued on Wednesday for something that happened this week. Uh, that's a pretty immediate thing. You could you could understand. Okay, they're they're playing a little bit behind the eight ball. They're trying to figure out what happened. But something that's been outstanding in January in this and this wasn't something in Los Angeles as the first domestic uh, felony domestic violence charges were filed across the country. This happened in your own county. And you didn't know about it. It makes you look foolish. It makes you look embarrassing. And that this was your choice. You made the choice to continue the relationship with Miles Bridges by allowing him to sign the qualifying offer. And, and I mean, at, at least you didn't make the long-term commitment. I guess you could get a little bit of credit for that. But you you allowed yourself to associate with Miles Bridges, and now you have frozen two straight seasons because of that, because it affected your ability to make decisions in the offseason to move your franchise forward and away from these kinds of stories. And now, you know, the franchise it continues to be a laughing stock among, and it's not just social media. I go out, I go out and, and, you know, get my hair cut or something and talk about what I do. I podcast. Yeah. Who do you podcast on the Charlotte Hornets? Whoa, buddy. It's something that's like known. This isn't just something that, that, that exists in the social media bubble. You have allowed your brand to absorb all of this. And for what, for what it, it is, it's outrageous to me. And they were not powerless to stop this. And I, I, I just cannot stress this enough that they had so many points along the way where they had a they had a decision point and and they chose every step along the way to continue to associate themselves with Miles Bridges and they deserve every bit of criticism that comes their way for that this is not to excuse them this is only to provide as much clarity as we possibly can from what i can tell the warrant was issued today or yesterday for an event that took place in january it does seem like even if the warrant warrant was issued, it was for an event in January. Yes, but it was not released in January to the point where Miles Bridges was dodging this and continuing to just prolong this until, well, he knew about the incident, right? Like if Miles does it, 
then it, unless Miles Bridges is directly telling the Hornets himself or his agency or his attorney, then I'm not sure the Hornets would have known it. It does not ref- so, not to ref- not to refute. Go ahead. Well, so I again, I think we've got to we're going to wait on some information to become more clear. But my reading on this, especially from the Baxter Holmes report, is that there's a criminal summons, which is, which is essentially like, hey, come to court and answer for this thing. And if you don't, then we're going to serve an arrest warrant to make you come into court and answer for this thing. There's that that was issued on Wednesday. Okay. And then, according to Baxter Holmes, he says there also is an unserved arrest warrant that was first issued on January 2nd. My reading of this, and, and I'm again, as things develop, maybe I'm proven <laughs> yeah, wrong here, but my crazy. reading of this is that there are two separate incidents. There is an unserved warrant from, Jan- for, from January 2nd, mm-hmm. and there is a court summons that was issued on Wednesday for an incident that we don't know in terms of when that incident occurred. Yeah, it being first issued, according to Baxter Holmes, on January 2nd would have that happen. I was looking at the case summary, and there was nothing that had anything before October 11th. But who knows? The the reporting from Baxter is the clearest, and so who knows? The case summary doesn't match that, at least as the way that I was looking at it. It doesn't matter. Bottom line, bottom line, one incident, two incidents, five incidences, seven incidences, it doesn't matter. The Hornets are once again embroiled in this situation where all people are going to see And all people should see is violated a domestic violence protective order, misdemeanor child abuse, and injury to personal property. To go along with all of the other horrible words and images that we've seen and videos that we've seen associated with this case. And it's it's just um, unfortunate doesn't seem like a strong enough word. It's just I think it's outrageous, honestly. All right, so do you want to let's go to the third segment. Let's give our finishing thoughts on the Miles Bridges situation and also talk about Kai Jones as well, his release, official release as the Hornets announced it yesterday. And the and the that. NBA. Can I say one more thing about the 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 NBA and their investigation mm-hmm. that we didn't see one letter of, we did not see one word of their mm-hmm. investigation into this. Uh they gave us a little peek behind the curtain uh, in terms of who they talked to, but no names. Uh, you know, and no, uh, nothing in terms of what they found. And Ro- uh, Rod, uh, who has been on the show, Rodimus Prime on on Twitter, um, yeah. he made, I think, what is the the good point here that there are obviously limitations to what teams and leagues can do in terms of their investigative power. And I think people, fans, and myself, honestly, assume that if they've done an investigation, well, it's been thorough, they've talked to everyone, but they are not, they're not the FBI. You know, I we give too much credit to these investigations, and especially, especially oh, when yeah. we don't see one word of them in terms of their findings, but they obviously missed this, and if you don't think that, that if there was a warrant out January 2nd, and the NBA didn't know about it, and the Hornets didn't know about it, and that that's not gonna make them upset, that's not oh, going to yeah. make Adam Silver look foolish, and that's going to make him upset. Then you're kidding yourself. I mean, there is something. There will be ramifications of of just of just the fact of just the fact that this information seemingly was hidden from the view of the team in the league. There will be ramifications to that. It, it, it's possible that they knew, and that they baked this into the suspension, which would also make them look bad. So I, I that would, yeah, not. I mean, in terms, right. yeah, that would be a cover. <laughs> right. Honestly, that's like a cover up. I mean, it's I'm crazy. Just saying it's correct. It's possible, but the the remember the Titans line from PD comes to mind, or or not? They don't want to know PD. Yeah, they they don't want to know. It's when the Hornets do the investigation, they want to be able to say they've done the investigation. The NBA wants to be able to say that they've done the investigation, and if they come to a blockade where they can't get some information and they feel comfortable enough that nobody else can get that information too, then it's not like they're going to try to beat the blockade down in order to get it. And so then they just walk away and say, yeah, we did it. We did the investigation. We got all the information necessary to make this, this disciplinary action, whatever. And until something else happens again like this, and Glenn Counts reports it on WSOC, we don't find out any other information until then. Well, for a second straight season, Walker, the Hornets are leading the league in gathering information. Uh, they are That's bottom right. five in the league, though, at actually getting information. It seems like right. they're good That's at well. gathering it. 
Um, but doing anything about it, actually finding the correct information, uh, they seem to be lagging well behind the rest of the league. All right. I want to talk about the vibes coming up next on the Lockdown Hornets podcast. How much can they be salvaged after this? After a day where Kai Jones released after Miles Bridges has a summons and a arrest warrant for an incident at his at the victim of the domestic, felony domestic violence charge that he pled no contest to. After all of that, what are the vibes like going into the season? We'll talk about it coming up next. Locked on Hornets. Doug, here's another thing I was thinking about with Miles Bridges. So here we are. We were we were starting to talk about the basketball product. We were starting to talk more about how he would be integrated back into the rotation. We were starting to talk about what the front court would look like with Miles, with PJ Washington, with Gordon Hayward. On one side, there's there's one party that's going to say, okay, you overlooked the thing that happened to Miles Bridges that forced him to miss a, a, over a season's worth of basketball. No, it didn't happen to I Miles. I mean, Miles didn't happen. It didn't happen to him. You know, Miles was an active party in that. Phrasing could have been better. With Miles Bridges, people would say that, okay, well, now we're just talking about the basketball side. I would argue we talked about it a lot. I think uh, the, uh, another party would say that as well. But what we choice? Do you, starting... but what cho- at some point, there comes a point, what choice do you have? Correct. That, that's the yep. situation that the franchise put us in and any fans who felt disgusted by what happened. That's the situation that the franchise subjected us to. And so at some point, you're, you're not going to – every time you mention his stats or a dunk that he makes or a three-pointer that he hits, it would be honestly absurd to mention the felony domestic violence charges, okay? Right. So at some point, we had to reckon with the idea that you've got to talk about this guy. You don't have to glorify him, but you got to talk about this guy in, in a way that makes sense to the people that are listening to your podcast wanting basketball analysis and information. The point being – that we were robbed about talking about the on-court product with the Hornets uh-huh. should be so desperate for us to talk about. Now we, we can't do that anymore <laughs> because, because it happened again, because we have an arrest warrant for January, because we have a summons, because now we have to discuss this. And so as we were starting to discuss miles bridges and the on-court basketball product, as it affected the team, now we can't, despite us having very good feelings about the season ahead, and as Miles Bridges, because of his doing, going to be the reason that he completely tanks all of the good feelings that you had. I mean, media day was glorious. I mean, we were all skipping. We were frolicking. And maybe that was should have been, you know, that was a little too much, given that they should've had pulled, Miles Yeah, you're Bridges right. We should have pulled back the frolicking. With the, with the frolicking, it, it was fine up until the point that we frolicked. 100%. And so now we we don't get the t- now we don't get to discuss that. We were going to have that a little bit with Kai Jones, but now with Miles Bridges, how, how right right like you're you're so right. This is the point I wanted to make. When he dunks it, when he catches an alley hoop from Lamelo from Lamelo Ball, when he gets a game saving rebound, whatever. No, it would be absurd to reference his charge every single time. But I'll be damned if now I'm not going to start thinking about it every single time he does something good. Certainly in the first what like 20, 30 games. I mean, I was getting to a point where I wouldn't wow. think about it every time he recorded a stat. But now, Doug, I don't know about you. Maybe different strokes, different folks, man. Anytime he does something worth a damn on the court, I am going to think, how in the world do I celebrate this? Where time heals a lot. And so that was the case I was starting. I think fans were starting to get yeah. to the point where they could cheer for a positive Miles Bridges play. Man, I'm going to feel dirty for doing that if he's on the court. I don't think he's going to be anytime soon. I was going to say, I, I think you're going to be saved by the fact that I, I do not at this point believe that there is any way that he yeah. makes his debut on November 17th. And I so, don't know whether that's a team action that happens yeah. or whether that's a league action that happens. They've already they already apparently super secret – probation suspended him for an entire season and that affected the <laughs> yeah. actual suspension that they they sent out so i don't know how long this process will take and and what needs to happen but i just can't imagine that he's going to hit the floor and this comes on the heel of the team separating themselves from former first round pick kai jones for behavior that is obviously hurting kai jones but is not as far as we know, hurting anyone else. It's not affecting anyone else's lives other than Kai Jones. And they made the decision as a franchise, 
we're not going to be party to the behavior and the, the, the situation around Kai Jones. And so now this comes on the heel of that. And so the question becomes, okay, well, how are you going to react as a franchise to a player that actions seem to be, according to these reports and uh, police reports, affecting other human lives? It's, it's a bad look, and it, it doesn't look great for the Hornets, especially after Kai Jones is released. And then this Miles Bridges story came out a couple hours afterwards, only a couple of hours. And we we didn't think that they would release Kai Jones at this point, Doug. I, I'm, I'm not I surprised. I'm, I'm not going to say I'm surprised, but right. when we were forced to talk about it and project when they might officially release Kai, we didn't think it would be right here, right now. You think they would have gotten a, a few more things in order that they – that maybe they needed to, but yeah, I mean, he, he was released as well. And the Kai Jones things, the, the only thing that affects the other players is when he, you know, talks about how he's better than Mark Williams or Nick Richards or, yeah, but, you know, tweets at miles bridges and that's it. But you know, pretty benign stuff. But, no, but nothing on the level of, of uh, misdemeanor yeah. child abuse and terrorizing the victim of domestic violence. No, I don't, I don't think it's anywhere near that level. And, and here's another question. I'm going to throw something out here. Did clutch, Sports, his representatives know about this arrest warrant. Did they negotiate in bad faith? Because they've nego- they've been negotiating with the Hornets, and those negotiations broke down and ultimately resulted in him signing the one year qualifying offer. Uh, but if if that negotiation was done in bad faith, is is there an opportunity for that contract to be voided? I mean, there's so many questions at this point, not a ton of answers. Uh, but I think one thing that we do know is is that the. The one thing that I know is that the Hornets put themselves in this situation. And at some point, at some point, I believe they should. I don't know if they will, but I believe at some point the new ownership group that just took over should reckon with that idea, should should discuss that idea, should come clean about that idea. And I think at some point, say something to the effect of, hey, we're not going to we're not going to operate like this anymore. We're going to yeah. put ourselves into better positions to actually discuss basketball and to not be associated with these kinds of stories anymore. Yeah, I mean, we've it, seen other organizations do it. <laughs> Portland had to go through this. Portland had this reputation, and they had to go through this. And they said, you know, at some point they were like, enough's enough. Enough's enough. Yeah, especially with Miles. I mean, we all know it's a common take when anything off the court or off the field happens to an individual. We always discuss just how much you're willing to tolerate because of the talent of that player. Miles Bridges, a fringe all-star on the ascent, was going to get $30 million. Clearly a very talented player. Doug, I think you and I can both agree, even with that being such a messed up way of viewing how to sign it, even if you wanted to do that, there's just no way... The talent is still still worth dealing with all of this. I it's it's not worth it. I I don't understand what the the goal for the Hornets here, right? Like if you were to truly think about the benefit for the Hornets, it would be to win as many games as possible. And Miles is going to help you do that on the court as long as he's able to play on the court. But there are so many other benefits to just cutting ties right now. Obviously, Miles Bridges has to get rehabilitation to the point where he stops having arrest warrants and summons and things that involve misdemeanor misdemeanor child abuse and or felony domestic violence. Okay, let's get that fixed, and that will be the the greatest thing possible. But if you're the Charlotte Hornets, it's just not worth it anymore. I don't understand the benefit anymore. I understand winning games, but to me, man, I think the new ownership, you're right, Doug, can make a nice statement in not allowing Miles Bridges to play for them anymore. Yeah, the math doesn't make sense, and I don't think it ever. Honestly, I don't think it ever made sense. Um, I don't. Yeah. I don't believe that giving more money and more influence uh, to to people who commit these acts is good for the community, is good for the the team involved in doing that, and I, and I don't think it's good for the individual either. I don't think it's good for Miles Bridges. I, in the same way that I believe that the release of Kai Jones can be a step in the direction of getting Kai Jones the help he needs and 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 try to whatever's going on with Kai Jones figure that out yeah. cuz he's not going to figure it out as as a, a member of a professional basketball team and the pressures and all of the things that come along with being a professional basketball player I think it makes it more difficult to figure those kinds of things out. We have plenty of cases of people who have dealt with mental illness in the league that can speak to that. They can speak to that idea and some people are able to deal with it and some people need uh, to to have some things happen so that they can deal with it. And in the same way, like I, I believe 
that you know more money and more power and more influence is is not helpful in these kinds of situations and and I'll continue to say that until um, you know the NBA starts caring about women and taking these things seriously. All right, thanks for hanging with us today. No, it wasn't a fun episode. Trust me, it wasn't fun for us either, but it's something to discuss because it affects the Charlotte Hornets and it's all too familiar at this point, unfortunately, in the highest of ways. That'll do it for us on Lockdown Hornets. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your pods. Make sure Game to Game is your second listen, especially when the season ramps up. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On discusses it in a way no other podcast network can catch that podcast anywhere you get your pods. Have a great rest of your day. We're going to try to pick up the vibes, I guess, tomorrow. Who knows, man? Who knows what's going to come up? We have a preseason game tonight. There is that. There's actual basketball being played against the Washington Wizards. So we'll try to give you a recap tomorrow on Lockdown Hornets.